गुड मॉर्निंग प्रोफेसर अरबी उंगली इधर पंडित होस्ट हैं अरबी पन्नेगा पन्नेगा सर पन्नेगा हाय यू आर यू आर इन म्यूट नाउ या 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 वेरी वेरी ग्लाड टू सी यू thank you so much for all the guidance you gave us uh, for uh, getting the approval from ifip and uh, all the things which has happened just yeah. just sharing experience and uh, uh, you know i have uh, a friend, uh, indian student in paris oh yeah okay they attend international uh, uh, master in epita Okay. Engineering school. Okay. And uh, it is uh, over ten years now. Okay. They come uh, <laughs> also from Chennai. Oh, uh, we are also in Chennai. Hmm. We will wait for the participants to join, Mom. Yes, and uh, uh, we um, prepared the presentation. Uh, with uh, Dominique uh, Verdejo, who is in charge of a new uh, working group in IFIP. And maybe I uh, try to share my screen to see. Uh, am I in play? Yeah. Uh, Dominique, tu veux essayer uh, la présentation globale ou pas? Um, alors cette présentation. Hello Priya Darsini. Hello sir. Hello professor. Okay. Okay, I will start with that and after you switch to yours, okay? Voilà, moi je pourrais très simplement partager, on va juste faire un test de partage. Euh, ah voilà, il faut il faudrait à ce moment-là, il faudra que tu me donnes le, la main en, en arrêtant le partage de ton côté. Voilà, et à ce moment-là, je reprendrai le partage et je partagerai donc euh, la fenêtre qui se situe là, il faut toutes les afficher qui est là voilà, voilà. et là je passerai un diaporama go to first light Je reprendrai à partir d'ici. Go to bon. first slide. First slide. First. Ok, first. ok. Donc, euh, euh, je, je partage mon truc et après tu reprends. Je prendrai. Oui, je reprendrai à partir de d'ici. Ok, donc, sur ok. Mon premier slide. Ok, donc tu voilà. euh, donc, arrêtes la... de partager. J'arrête le partage. Voilà. The floor is yours, professor. Attends, on attend les participants. Yeah, we, we are waiting for the participants to join. We will uh, start in few minutes. Yes. Uh, it's okay for you. Can I uh, call you Priya? Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's uh, easier for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. And let me know uh, how many participants you are you have. Uh, actually, we are expecting around fifty. Mm -hmm. uh, they are they are joining. Actually, paper presentation uh, is also going on in parallel. Uh, mm -hmm. So after that, they will join this link. Okay. Then uh, I will explain uh, very shortly uh, uh, technical committee we have because we have new technical committee and the same everything is moving you know is technology then uh, of course your students are uh, invited to join because we need a new generation coming. Yeah, yeah obviously <laughs> yeah. Hmm. 
And I uh, went to shortly uh, through the paper's title, not abstract because uh, I had no access. Um, and this is uh, very various topics and that's very good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and what you teach? Uh, my research area is computer vision. Computer did, vision. Yeah, I did my research in acoustic image uh, image processing, where mm -hmm. I would uh, identify objects in uh, underwater objects. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I have uh, developed an algorithm for uh, detecting the objects uh, underwater. The underwater, underwater. images. Mm -hmm. Yeah, underwater is it images. Put in the water, because you have waves, and then and this is a sort of noise. Yeah. So uh, the uh, the images what we have uh, used for my uh, what I have used for my research is uh, uh, obtained from uh, sonar, a specific mm -hmm. sonar like uh, side scan sonar was used for uh, acquiring the images. We mm -hmm. use the side scan sonar for getting the images. I pre-processed the image and uh, I came up with an algorithm for object detection. Very good. Then you can detect the pollution in the ocean. <laughs> yeah. Yes, this is uh, a lot uh, of uh, things to do, it's, uh, including industrial robots mm. uh, participating in uh, production, uh, in uh, detecting the pieces for uh, a production chain and, and so on, a lot of applications. Yeah. Then your conference is uh, IFP event since uh, it is third year. Pardon, I don't get you, mom. It is third year that your conference is IFP event. Yeah, it is IFIP event. Yeah, very yeah. good. Yeah. Very good. And uh, you plan to publish Springer book, of course. Yes, yes, yes. After it's already? Yeah, after getting your permission, uh, uh, we have approached Springer and they have also given uh, permission for us to publish the paper in uh, Springer Proceedings. Yes, very good. Then you apply it for, uh, to Springer already. Yeah, and we have applied. Yes, because they changed the person. This is Christina something who is in charge. Christina Rice, okay. who is in charge of this. Okay. okay. Then I will send you uh, her contact. Sure, because it sure. was it was Miriam before, and now they changed it to Christina. Okay, actually, I got mail from. Uh, what you have? What you have as contact? I got it from uh, Renon uh, uh, Nagant. Yes, yes. Ah, Nagant. Ah. He's, he's a boss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got mail from that. Yeah, from okay, uh, good, yeah. good. Actually, now uh, after uh, this conference, uh, we have to prepare the proceedings. Yes. And uh, yeah, when we submit, uh, we'll be getting the volume number, right? This is our understanding. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also, if you wish, of course, you can, as I'm doing in another uh, working group, ask the student for extended papers. Oh. Okay. If you wish. Okay. Maybe because uh, the papers, usually the papers on the conference are uh, shorter. Yeah. Yeah. And if you wish to have more, <laughs> no. you can try these extended okay. papers. No. For sure. Yeah. Anyway, it's, produ in, it's published in India, but it's an Indian person in charge of. Oh, okay. <laughs> you wow. will see. <laughs> what is, who, who, which in, uh, you're telling about the extended paper where it will be published i didn't get your uh... it's i think it's uh, uh, produced in uh, in india okay okay and um, uh, publishing process is managed by the indian team oh sure okay i don't remember the name it's you know it's always too complex for me. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. But uh, I had the message from my previous book uh, 
just publish on AI for knowledge management, uh, energy and sustainability. Okay. Then you can also participate in the other groups. Sure. Of course. Sure. Yeah. Leave it. Jansi? Yes, Priya. Jansi, shall we start? We have okay. only 12 participants. Yeah. Shall we wait or shall we start, Jansi? We can wait for another five minutes if uh, if it's okay from... Professor, uh, Professor Unica and uh, Professor Dominic. Yes, it's, it's okay, but because you said uh, one thirty for you, <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> Okay, it's no problem, no, it's not a problem. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, for discussion, how we do for discussion? Because uh, they ask a question by chat or you, who manage? Is the Yancy who manage? Who manage this? Or you? Uh, they can uh, ask in chat and also discussion. They can, yeah? yeah, discussion can happen both via chat and uh, or uh, they can unmute and they can ask you the question directly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you manage this? You manage the questions? And I have to to look the chat. No, no. I will ask you. I will. I'll be uh, active and uh, I will interact with you. Okay. If there are any chat, any questions in the chat, immediately I'll let you know. Maybe for, for the next, uh, you are for.
Jansi, Jansi, we will start Jansi. Anyway, okay. it, is, it is streaming in YouTube. So uh, we can get the insights in the YouTube also. Okay. Professors, can sh shall we start? Yes. Okay. okay. Good afternoon. And Good afternoon, everyone present here. Uh, myself, Dr. Jansi Rani, uh, Associate Professor from Computer Science here to anchor the event. Uh, we will come back all the audience and the participants for the second keynote address of the International Conference on Computational Intelligence and Data Science. Uh, we would like you to invite you again for the second keynote address on what AI for global security. Now I request the conference chair, Dr. Priyadarshini, to introduce our keynote speakers. Thank you, Jansi. Good afternoon to all. It's my pleasure in inviting the keynote speakers for the session. Uh, today we have Professor Unika Merzier uh, Lawrence and Professor Dominic Vedijo with us to share their insights on the topic, uh, what AI for global security. Unika is the Professor of Artificial Intelligence and Knowledge Co-Innovation EPITA. After completing her electronic engineering, she did her uh, doctorate in computer science from Paris University. She has been associated with the Global Innovation Strategy since 1996, which is an international network for knowledge management, innovation, and AI specialists. She is also associated with 3D Innovation, which is an uh, international association for global uh, innovation since 2007. She is a chair in IFIP TC12 Artificial Intelligence, uh, member of the Management Board Knowledge for uh, Innovation EU, expert for uh, EU programs and author of more than 100 scientific articles and books. Her research interest includes AI for innovation ecosystems, knowledge management and solving complex problems, eco design, impacts of AI and AI for sustainability. She is also part of the editorial board of uh, Springer IFIP AICT. And she is a reviewer for several refereed journals such as uh, Springer, Elsevier, and so on. She has acted as PC member and has given keynote talks in several conferences. Welcome you, ma'am. Thank you very much, Priya, and yeah. welcome to our participant. Uh, I will also uh, introduce Professor Dominic. Uh, today in this uh, session, we also have Professor Dominic Vedijo. Uh, he is an ISO certified lead auditor, GDPR compliance auditor and external GPO. He has over 20 years of experience in IT architecture, security system integration and consulting, including cyber security, uh, video surveillance, identity access management with a constant interest for innovation, design thinking and AI applications. After spending 15 years in the software industry as an R&D engineer, a product and a project manager, he created his first video surveillance system as a service startup and launched a security consulting activity in 2000. He has a master's in computer science and artificial intelligence from University of Paris and a master's in enterprise security from the National Institute for Security and Justice in Paris. He is a proud member of the Paris government cybersecurity awareness project. He is also chair in IFIP TC12 working group 12.13. His research focuses on AI and security. We are happy to have Professor Unika and Professor Vedijo here with us for uh, ICC Ideas 2022 as a keynote speakers. Uh, thank you for accepting and uh, over to you, ma'am. Thank you, you're welcome. Then what AI for global security? But I will start with uh, IFIP because we, uh, two years ago, we celebrated 60 years of IFIP. IFIP was created with uh, UNESCO in, part, uh, uh, in partnership with UNESCO. And now we uh, have uh, 
reinforced collaboration with UNESCO, especially in the field of ethics. Um, then we have uh, 14 uh, technical uh, committee uh, in a technical assembly. And you have the chairs uh, here. Uh, of course, you can uh, check the IFIP mine website to, uh, for more information. But I think if you are interested in some of these technical committee, you are free to join. Then first is on foundation of computer science. Uh, second, uh, software theory and practice, uh, education, which is very important today, uh, information technology application, communication systems, TC7 uh, system modeling and optimization, um, TC8 information systems uh, in general, uh, TC9 ICT and society, uh, TC10 computer system technology, TC11 uh, security and privacy protection in information processing, TC12 my <laughs> uh, TC which is artificial intelligence, and 13 is about human computer interaction, and uh, the last uh, created uh, two, no more, three years ago, it's entertainment computing. Um, of course, there is many interaction between all these technical committee, which is managed by, by technical assembly. Uh, now, uh, in TC12, uh, TC12, in fact, was created in 1981, which is uh, an old technical committee. Um, you have the, a link to the website. And uh, uh, currently in uh, TC12, we have 13 uh, working groups. The first is on knowledge representation and reasoning. Um, you prob probably know uh, Ulrich uh, Furbach, which uh, was uh, my predecessor, and uh, he's involved, still involved in this group. Um, second is on machine learning and data mining. Uh, third is on intelligent agent. Uh, fourth is on semantic web. Unfortunately, it was closed because of uh, uh, unavailability of the person who chaired this group. But we, I would really like to uh, run this group again. Then if you have the candidates among you, uh, you are welcome. Uh, five is artificial intelligence application. They run the conference AI AI. Uh, it is mainly uh, in Greece, this conference, but with, part with international participant participation. Uh, six, uh, it's uh, knowledge management that I manage ITER2 uh, for, the, for the moment. Uh, Working group seven is on social networking, semantics, and collective intelligence. Um, eight was also closed, but we absolutely need this, and uh, we are preparing the new group uh, to replace this on uh, health, inter artificial intelligence for health. Nine is about computational intelligence. Ten, uh, tens artificial intelligence and cognitive science. And 11 uh, created two years ago, it's artificial intelligence for energy and sustainability. Uh, recently created uh, 12 um, AI governance. Uh, and uh, the last uh, that will be presented by Dominic, it's AI for global security, just approved by technical assembly. And of course, we have a collaboration between all these uh, working group and also other technical committee because AI is everywhere now. Then today, uh, this slide represents the patrimony of uh, what we have, what we produced since the official birth of AI. And we have a lot of techniques uh, today. And uh, the people focus mainly uh, only on uh, uh, deep learning uh, here, while machine learning is, uh, as uh, science was founded in 1970. 
and we have a lot of other possibilities and uh, to use and to combine the techniques of uh, symbolic machine learning with uh, connectionist machine learning. And uh, um, already in 2000, um, Richard Michalski, who was the founding father of machine learning, uh, launched a conference in uh, Portugal, Guimarães, on uh, multi strategy machine learning. And multi strategy machine learning is a sort of toolbox, then you have all these uh, algorithms that you can use, uh, and they are available. And uh, uh, of course, you can combine uh, for better efficiency. Uh, this, uh, as technology, we have something which is not very known, uh, which is constraint programming. Constraint programming is uh, uh, very uh, useful for the combinatory problems with constraints, such as scheduling, uh, planning, uh, manufacturing. And uh, it is much more better to use a constant programming, then try to do it with machine learning, uh, which is not effective for this kind of problem problems. And we have multi-agent systems, which integrated now integrate now many various algorithms. It's also uh, a toolbox, collaborating toolbox, uh, that we have to our disposal to use in function of the problem to solve. Uh, and this is a part of knowledge and uh, uh, the people since uh, uh, now uh, over 15 years, uh, 15 maybe more, uh, developed the various uh, uh, knowledge model. One of them is ontology. Uh, maybe Dominique will say something about that, but it is a common uh, use model now for uh, knowledge management, collaborating with uh, uh, data analysis, then we can cross uh, the result from uh, uh, the data database uh, using ontology. Um, what more? Uh, knowledge, uh, not knowledge processing, of course, but we have also natural language processing. And at this stage, we uh, have to make a distinction between knowledge, uh, uh, natural language processing and natural language understanding. Uh, for example, uh, today we use a lot of uh, natural language processing, but without understanding, without deep understanding. That it is uh, really very important for, uh, uh, for uh, assistant, and especially individual assistant working for me, for chatbot, for effective chatbot, especially in industry and in the other fields. Uh, speech recognition, it's working very well because we have now multi uh, model interfaces, uh, image processing, you have your professor specialized in uh, uh, image processing, uh, signal processing, knowledge processing, etc. Uh, in terms of hardware, we have AR architecture. Now, uh, researchers are working also on neural machines uh, and, uh, of course, robots, IoTs, drone, etc. Then uh, we have all these to our disposal. And uh, please use all this technique and uh, use it uh, to uh, elaborate the smart and green solution. Um, just a little bit about third type of AI because it came through marketing, mainly through marketing. And the main motivation was to sell more and quicker. Uh, that's, uh, that's why Amazon was among the first who triggered this uh, uh, third type of AI. Uh, unfortunately, they use only deep learning and analytics in the first uh, time uh, and deep learning on navigation data and, and uh, uh, 
built what they call client experience, which in fact is not the client experience, it's just a tracking of the client navigation. And for example, if I um, accidentally go to uh, click to, to the website, I'm not interested. And after 30 seconds, I, uh, I quit this website, I'm registered as interested in this field, which is not my experience. Uh, next part is uh, intelligent assistant. And of course we have, you probably use the intelligent assistant. Uh, my dream is to have a really uh, intelligent assistant for me, uh, working with me and learning from me and not just uh, traditional uh, for everybody. Then uh, we have, uh, there is uh, still the progress to do in this field. Of course, robot drones and IoT and autonomous system. Um, uh, the base for this was built long time ago, and now uh, it is it becomes more popular because of power of machines. And we still have a lot of needs and real challenge because we have to face the complex problems such as climate change that requires uh, not only big data because big data is the opposite of environmental, <laughs> generate a huge environmental impact. Then uh, we need probably alternative solution to solve all, to address all these complex problems. And today we have AI is embedded in a decision support system, in many applications. Um, we have uh, the drones, uh, as you have uh, here on the picture, it's uh, 100 kilometers uh, north from my place. It's a higher viaduct de Milo. And uh, this guy here is uh, testing, is used, uh, uses the drone to, uh, uh, per, uh, for, for uh, detecting of defaults in the viaduct. Then it can be used for thermal diagnosis of building also now. Uh, uh, there is many application if what we call biz, um, building intelligent management. Uh, it's used for measurement of cereal surfaces to evaluate the fertilizer we need. Uh, for inspection of power lines and many other possibilities it becomes very, uh, very common today. And we have a future factory which, impl which implement industry 4.0. And the characteristic here is that this system collaborate with human. They were built not to replace the human, but to help human in their work. And on the left, you have the image of uh, uh, Schneider Electric uh, factory, future factory. And on the right, it is a Safran Cobot, uh, also in France. You probably have uh, Schneider Electric in India too. Then we have a lot of uh, AI in industry 4.0 switching to industry 5.0 now. Then uh, we have robots, internet of things, uh, simulation with digital twins, and cybersecurity, which is a part of a global security of the system. Um, cloud computing, which requires security too. Uh, add uh, additive manufacturing with 3D printing and coming 4D printing. Um, augmented reality and virtual reality. Uh, it's related to economy with growth and job, to leadership of the company who use this. It requires a huge energy to work, uh, policy to make it uh, run and to create the politics to uh, facilitate this kind of development. It requires a lot of human knowledge and experience and to generate an impact on environment. Uh, as we can see, there is a lot of uh, uh, needs for security here. 
And as I said, we have still uh, the complex problem to solve. Uh, as, uh, for example, as I mentioned before, effective assistant able to learn with its user. Optimization everywhere. We need to optimize the use of water. We need to optimize the use of energy, the transportation in the city. And uh, of course, uh, we try to optimize uh, everything we do in uh, design, in uh, industry, in the other fields, and especially in, uh, in health industry, etc. Um, Eco-design, uh, it is something that we have to, uh, uh, it, it has to become a habit to, use, to, to work on eco-design. It should be, uh, eco aspects should be integrated into design and especially in IT because we produce it a lot. IT produces a lot of waste in terms of uh, devices and uh, generating of heat in data center. Uh, in terms of devices, um, uh, the release uh, as the software change often and take more and more places, we uh, have to update our device uh, <laughs> to, uh, to, to run the new software. And it's a vicious circle because uh, we update and update and throw it up. And the solution is uh, probably eco-design and maybe uh, as uh, uh, build the devices as uh, uh, Lego boxes, then instead of throwing out uh, the whole uh, device, we can just change the pieces uh, that uh, should be changed and keep uh, the device. As uh, for example, Xiaomi, uh, which uh, design uh, the tele smartphone, they already use this kind of eco-design. Uh, recycling, uh, it's good, but recycling uses the energy and we have to be careful on recycling. Uh, it is better to uh, maybe to uh, uh, smart buying. Uh, it's better than uh, buying and throwing up for recycling. And uh, especially in technology, it's, uh, it's extremely important to do that. And uh, in terms of energy, uh, on this picture here, you have a data center in Scandinavia. Uh, this data center, as you know, generate a huge energy and this energy uh, generate the heat for the environment and contributes to uh, melting ice. And now they try to introduce the circular uh, energy uh, to use this heat from data center to heat the houses, to heat the schools, to, uh, and hotels, and so on. In terms of software, I would like, it's already the trend to build the greener software. Uh, at this stage, we can use uh, the principle of old principle elaborated by one of the founding father of uh, AI, Alan Newell. Uh, he uh, introduced the knowledge level. And knowledge level is something above uh, component level, uh, network level, and it is uh, it consists at conceptual modeling of uh, the fields, uh, given fields you work on. And the main principle uh, for, for uh, uh, this uh, was uh, uh, genericity, reusability, and modularity. Then this principle should be applied into uh, the software uh, generation or, or design. Global security, I... Uh, leave this uh, to Dominic because uh, he's the expert in that, but this is a real complex problem to solve because we have not only one, but uh, the security uh, uh, is a complex problem composite of many things that should be 
consider in globality that, uh, with holistic approach. And one uh, also point that uh, it's coming and it is very interesting, will be uh, very useful in the future is human spare pieces, uh, combining the electronics uh, with uh, programming. And all these uh, problems require hybrid system, not only uh, big data and machine learning. Then combination of uh, all, all that apply at all that can uh, help us to build the greener and smart software. At this stage, we have to think about the warning and risk. But today, uh, because it's a trendy, uh, many people use the same. When I ask to my students, I have this problem, how, how, you can, how you suggest to solve this? And they answer big data and machine learning. I said, no, you, you have to think. You have to use your brain to analyze the problem first and then apply the right technique. And this is a, a risk to use the techniques that, not, that it, there is not the best for solving the given problem. Uh, then I uh, advise the student to be curious and to try to know the other techniques and um, uh, try to think how to find the best and the uh, greenest, greenest solution. Of course, we have to be aware of the bugs of autonomous system because we never can test everything in each situation. And especially when we have a fully autonomous system and people are confident. Uh, for example, uh, you probably have heard about the crash of the plane in Rio Paris. Uh, he cra uh, it, uh, it crashed because of missing data. The data was uh, uh, the detector, uh, uh, part of the detector was frozen. And uh, uh, with, with uh, no data, automated pilot was not, a not able to work. And, um, and the human uh, who took the lead of uh, managing the plane was not experienced lack it, uh, uh, of experience and uh, it uh, led to a crash. And uh, we have to think also about polluted data. And Dominic will uh, uh, explain this problem, uh, how to remove or uh, prevent the pollution of data uh, that serve to generate the models. And next, it's a week mastering of machine learning uh, programs. Uh, sometimes a uh, program uh, was conceived for doing something beneficial, and it can uh, change, it can develop a destructive uh, uh, method to achieving another goal. And the next point is about bad usages. Uh, for example, uh, we have a lot of AI today in auto autonomous weapon. This is a link to um, a video maybe you have heard about the miniature drones equipped with uh, a face recognition system and with a, a small uh, explosive able to recognize the face and uh, damage the brain. Imagine if the system make Made, make an error. And another point is about switching off the brain, what I call switching off the brain. It, uh, uh, today application has uh, uh, have a, um, a huge uh, cognitive impact. Then we have a lot of application um, advising us, suggesting us to buy this, to go this way, to go to this restaurant, while we have the brain. And uh, we need to use our brain. If we don't use, our brain will be um, atrophied. And instead of the brain, you will have a smartphone. 
because you have all this in this kind of application. Then at this stage, we have to be uh, aware about what we what is really useful for human uh, and what we can do it with our brain. And on this drawing here, which is described in my book, uh, Innovation Biosphere, um, I mentioned uh, eight impacts, uh, of course, economic, so, uh, social and societal, uh, cultural, uh, politics, and uh, environmental. And think about all impact you generate and this impact can be evaluated before doing, and it is a, a sort of eco-design. Uh, think about evaluating the impact before doing. And uh, um, my uh, opinion on uh, fourth generation, which is coming uh, to um, uh, improve what we do with big data and machine learning uh, is uh, expressed on this drawing. And we have still multi-source heterogeneous and unstructured, unstructured data that we uh, process with data-driven machine learning, building the models and then uh, searching that we integrate with knowledge models and human expertise to get explainable and robust decision support system. Explainability is something very important in today's system because uh, uh, in many cases, human needs explanation. Why I got these results? Uh, and how to maybe how to manage uh, the initial data to, uh, to get the better results. And as you know, uh, this is a big problem of we uh, try to, to solve in ethics, then uh, data are also polluted and uh, uh, they are not updated. It's nobody uh, who is uh, in charge of cleaning of the data from the web, for example. Then we have a lot of outdated data and uh, it's still, uh, they are still here and still uh, uh, use the space in uh, data uh, uh, center and uh, web. And from this, we can propose the knowledge-based services for business. Another point is uh, this one, how to combine uh, when we collect the data. We can use, use this collection guided by the knowledge models on one side and on the other side by ethical principles to get uh, the good quality of data, data of good quality, and in the same time, responsible AI. Then some perspective on uh, uh, AI. I think then we are moving from data science because data science is, is something very uh, trendy. Many companies and many students are excited with uh, data science. When I ask my student what you want to be in the future, they answer data scientist. And nobody is talking about knowledge scientists. And tomorrow we will need, we will have the need maybe in the, uh, next years for knowledge scientists. We have to think about reducing IT waste. As I mentioned before, we produce a lot of waste with IT and the other field, of course, which contributed to uh, climate change and uh, global pollution. Then we can reduce it with uh, uh, embedded uh, uh, eco design and thinking about this uh, modularity, uh, reusability, and uh, uh, genericity, which uh, was the principle of the first uh, generation of machine learning. Uh, my proposal is to make 
data slimming <laughs> because we have data obesity, but nobody is talking about data slimming. And this is really very important for um, uh, environment. And we don't need the huge amount of data. We need the relevant data. And the purpose is here, how to select the relevant data. And as I mentioned, circular energy uh, to uh, reuse uh, the uh, heat from data center, for example, to uh, heat uh, the houses, etc. Uh, we will also use this example by analogy to uh, for circular knowledge. What it means? It means that we have uh, uh, a lot of knowledge around. And um, we try to share this knowledge, but it's not sufficiently done. Then uh, we need to reuse the past experiences. The people who worked from the beginning of AI, they invented many things. They have a lot of experience. We cannot scratch them and use uh, the things from scratch. But think about combining all this experience and build on previous experience. And I give these two links to uh, the books uh, with my articles on the first, it's uh, this one uh, produced by a working group uh, AI for knowledge management. And the article is, can AI um, effectively help uh, in um, sustainable development? And the second is about, uh, it's coming, it's already available on the web, uh, Artificial Intelligence for Knowledge Management, Energy and Sustainability, with my article on um, digital uh, transformation, uh, how we can use AI for smart, smart and green digital transformation. And of course, in the book edited, uh, published by uh, uh, for 60, uh, aniv uh, 60 anniversary of uh, IFIP, uh, this is my article on future of AI and AI for future. And if you are interested, it's available on ResearchGate. Uh, why we talk about global security? Because in all a system I uh, shown uh, before, we need the security and it is interlinked complex problem and all fields are, are concerned. And today we have IT everywhere and also AI in health, in food, in water, energy, transportation, and we need the security for all these things. And we have a lot of threats and fake and we have also, we need uh, AI to distinguish the good and bad and uh, to, dis to detect the fakes. Um, we have to face the terrorism with early detection of uh, uh, low uh, noise, noise or uh, low signals and we swore as we have in, in Ukraine, this uh, war of security too. The security is smart city because everything is connected and everything here can be hacked and we have to prevent this. And uh, Dominique will explain how it can be, how we can prevent and what the methods uh, can be used to this. And I will finish with uh, security in uh, United Nations, in 17 United Nations sustainable goals, because we have, uh, we need to apply the security for everything, for quite all goals. Then uh, sustainable city and communities, uh, climate change, uh, water life, uh, Life on land, uh, peace and justice is very difficult uh, topic. Uh, power, 
poverty uh, and uh, zero hunger. Uh, it's also uh, worth of considering good health and well-being, quality education, access to education, clean water and sanitation, and uh, industry and innovation. Then we have security in many of these goals. And I stop here and uh, uh, pass the floor to Dominique. And we will have, uh, as you uh, wish, we, we can have a discussion after two presentation or now. Uh, Yancy on Priya, how you manage this? Yeah. Continue. Go, Dominique. <laughs> okay, so let's assume we move on from here. Uh, well, thank you very much, Unica. This uh, enlightening presentation is, I think, the best introduction we could have for my presentation about glue out security. Um, I have pointed out two particular um, uh, information in your presentation in, in the very last slides, which are uh, to me uh, a representative, very representative of the global context uh, that we have. You, you talked about the data slimming and the data slimming, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty uh, important to note that uh, it's, it's the major point that led uh, recently to the creation of the, the general data protection regulation in Europe. Uh, the fact that uh, the, the, the big uh, US IT companies like Amazon, Facebook, uh, were gathering and, uh, and, and uh, collecting so much information that is not really useful uh, is, is to some extent shocking and must be regulated. Well, this is the case now. There, there, there should be data slimming in the information collected. And this is for the privacy of the users, which is, of course, one component of the global security. And second point that you made, which looks very important to me, is, of course, the fact that AI and security have one thing in common. Well, first, of course, uh, AI is an excellent tool for security, but two, and more importantly, AI, just like security, are cross components over a very wide uh, number of uh, uh, domains, and particularly um, domains for security that I will now. Uh, present. So, in the aims of the, the TC 12.13, which is the, the working group 13 that we just created for the TC 12 Technical Committee 12 AI uh, uh, from IFIP, uh, we have identified the need to <clears throat> Um, study particularly uh, the different uh, faces of security. And we have identified uh, four domains, essential domains, where security is really needed. Uh, and um, what we uh, see here is that the first domain is cyber. We talk a lot, of course, about cybersecurity, and we see cybersecurity becoming a, a real issue at the moment uh, in the geostrategic context and the war in Ukraine that you were mentioning. Of course, uh, as IT is everywhere, security of IT, which is cybersecurity, is everywhere. And we have to protect our systems, but not only our systems, we have to protect objects. Uh, and we know that uh, the, the technology is now <clears throat> very pervasive and it enters everywhere in our lives, in our homes, in our enterprises, in our collectivities. Technology is everywhere. <clears throat> 
and technology may be a vulnerability if it's not protected. Uh, and and so, so we, we, we have identified cybersecurity of really uh, the most important part since cybersecurity is also security of the systems, security of the security systems. Uh, so there is some kind of uh, <clears throat> um, uh, rec recursive uh, speech here about the security. We have to protect everything, including the security systems, which are also IT systems. And um, the second domain is physical security, where we have to protect people and assets against intrusions, uh, destruction, theft. Uh, so, uh, for instance, you can cite uh, video surveillance or access control, which are disciplines of physical security. The third domain is economical security. And there again, uh, you have to protect citizens, you have to protect individuals and companies against fraud, theft, or competitive intelligence, which is another form of intellectual property theft uh, most of the time. Uh, and for, last but not least, uh, we see that security uh, is also security on a psychological level. And we've seen notably with the, uh, the, the uh, raise of uh, social networks, uh, the, the, the fact that people uh, are now connected, uh, very connected uh, through the smartphones, through the computer, and uh, this um, connection uh, can lead to influence. Uh, this has been the case, for instance, in some very important elections uh, in uh, major countries. Uh, uh, and and also, uh, unfortunately, the social networks can be uh, an excellent vector for radicalization, uh, leading a, a close contact between uh, major uh, terrorist groups and uh, people uh, located in their target countries. So we see here that uh, security is really uh, a global uh, system per se, or a global way of thinking, and that it has to be considered as a holistic uh, problem and solved with holistic systems in mind. So what are we expecting from uh, the, the, the work group 13 uh, in TC12? Uh, security for AI. We are, of course, expecting uh, high quality scientific studies and papers to be produced. And I think this is the best we can expect and hope for uh, the global scientific community. So we hope that uh, uh, the gathering uh, different um, domain experts uh, different uh, enterprises, um, different end users, uh, collectivities uh, from different countries will help uh, that process, but isn't it uh, the general purpose of uh, scientific research? Um, we hope that uh, thanks to this uh, 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 global thinking uh, about security, we will produce um, applications um, results uh, and uh, notably uh, contribute to enhance the protection and the surveillance uh, of people and infrastructure. Uh, thanks to the drones you were mentioning, Unica. Uh, we hope that we can improve uh, cyber security. Uh, through all the different components of cybersecurity. Um, and we hope that uh, uh, in the end, we will uh, better fight against crime and terrorism. And as you said, uh, of course, uh, this is uh, something that has to be done by including uh, 
processes, policies, and technology in a global uh, design. So we have identified uh, among the, the, the very numerous techniques and technologies of AI, we have identified four different uh, um, categories, uh, which say uh, categories uh, that uh, can be using uh, symbolic uh, or neuromimetic uh, techniques. Uh, the first uh, category of uh, technologies is, is bound to automated reasoning. Uh, the automated reasoning is, uh, is based on uh, these uh, technologies that, that can uh, simulate to some extent uh, human reasoning. Uh, it includes, of course, the latest developments in deep learning, but also the multi-agent technologies and the uh, scheduling and constraint-based uh, technologies uh, previously mentioned. Um, it also includes expert systems and case-based case reasoning. Uh, we have identified previously also in the presentation knowledge management as a very important asset. Knowledge management and uh, the, the knowledge-based services have to be investigated very thoroughly now, since knowledge, just like data, um, is, is, is growing and needs to be managed. If we don't create systems to manage knowledge, just like we manage security, we will, have, uh, we will be facing a very uh, large problem that we won't be able to transfer knowledge from one generation to another, and that is uh, becoming an issue. The third uh, area here of technology and techniques is the artificial perception and human machine interface. Um, and this is specifically based on techniques and technologies that have been developed in the past 15 years, I would say, and specifically about uh, uh, machine learning in terms of uh, capturing, analyzing uh, senses, um, giving the sense to the machine by artificial vision. Uh, we are now talking about artificial sensing. Um, so there's a lot of progress made in that area that enables better communication between the machine and, and the human. And um, we're mentioning natural language uh, processing and understanding, which is not the same, of course. But uh, look, now the machine, take uh, Alexa, for instance, from uh, Amazon. Uh, the, these uh, uh, artificial intelligence perfectly understands uh, uh, the, the, the words that you say. I mean, at least from a perceptual point of view, uh, the uh, the assistants uh, from Apple, Amazon, Google are excellent uh, pieces of technology. So uh, now we have to work on the uh, on the on the, um, uh, the language uh, understanding. But at least for the language perception perceptual part, this is absolutely excellent. Uh, look in another field like artificial uh, vision, and Priya, our host, is, is, is an expert of artificial vision. She will understand perfectly. Uh, the, what happened since 2015 in machine learning and deep learning uh, is absolutely outstanding. Uh, and we can um, say that today a computer uh, has a, a better uh, a better vision than a uh, human. And since those techniques can be applied to very different visual signals, uh, uh, like uh, radar, like uh, sonar, like uh, uh, thermal vision, uh, it goes beyond the senses of humanity. It already uh, uh, overtakes us uh, in this domain of vision and perception. The, the fourth uh, uh, list of technologies is, is analytics. Well, analytics is, is mostly about uh, 
uh, data mining, uh, as we previously uh, mentioned, uh, um, video analytics, which is a specific category of, of artificial vision, uh, behavior analytics, uh, very useful both in cybersecurity and physical security, like circulation control, for instance, and sentiment analysis. Um, again, the social networks uh, can be used and must be uh, uh, at very uh, cautiously um, because they can be used for analyzing uh, the, the, the sentiment of the people who use them uh, just as they can be used, uh, unfortunately, uh, to uh, influence those people. So we see that AI for security, uh, for global security in all these domains uh, and with all these techniques can have a powerful impact. And uh, conscious about that, we must not forget that uh, they may be, there may be, as we said, subversive uh, use of AI. So there's been a lot of consideration, uh, notably uh, in Europe, uh, for uh, misuse of AI and risk of AI. I'm mentioning here two initiatives. One is from uh, the American NIST and the other from Europe uh, that uh, uh, deal with this problem of misuse and ethics AI. Um, so I have uh, abstracted here three, at least at least three, but there are many more um, um, uh, characteristics uh, of uh, these ethic AI for security. It should be lawful, it should be ethical, and it should be robust. So uh, now I propose that we have a look at uh, three uh, typical examples of domains where uh, security is enhanced by AI. The, the, the first on purpose is uh, video analytics. Video analytics had two phases since it was born. It's the capacity of the machine to assist human in video surveillance. Um, it's been out uh, as a, a filtering, a video filtering component in cameras um, since uh, the year 2000 approximately. And we've seen very basic uh, uh, filtering made on video uh, for uh, detecting uh, tailgating, wire crossing, as I mentioned on the slide, abandoned luggage, uh, for counting people, uh, for detecting movement and movement direction. This is very, very um, um, simple, very simple uh, processing of image that was basically um, based on the MPEG uh, algorithm uh, and facilitated by the ASICs uh, that are uh, running into the cameras. So that's why the industry proposed them. And the idea was that uh, the camera could do some kind of pre-processing on, on, the, on the image and help the operator of video surveillance or the, the alarm management system to uh, <clears throat> detect uh, uh, behaviors and, and uh, raise alarms. Uh, but since 2015, we have entered a second era of uh, this video analytics. Uh, and this is due to uh, the, the considerable uh, uh, computing power that we have gained with the GPUs notably that have allowed uh, inferencing systems uh, based on deep learning models uh, to be run in real time over the, the video signals. And that are now achieving a very, very uh, interesting results, uh, analyzing images in real time and detecting 
faces, people, objects, being able to label those detections and provide a very, uh, a very supportive uh, help for video operators. And the, the, the best example of this enhanced video analytics uh, brought by deep learning is face recognition. Uh, face recognition uh, has made a quantum leap. It was stalled, stalled up until these technologies arrived and, and is now uh, a, a very trendy uh, application uh, of biometrics. Face recognition uh, works very well. And uh, if we can uh, abstract the difficulty of the uh, data sets uh, bias, uh, we have a technology that is uh, basically uh, functioning on very large scale, for example, in China. Uh, and, and that and that's a very good example of a very good application of uh, uh, this uh, uh, video analytics progress. But beside video analytics, uh, another example and another domain is the the SOC, the Security Operations Center in Cybersecurity, where we have different uh, ways of improving uh, the human machine cooperation thanks to AI. So that's an excellent example. Um, so if, for instance, uh, the, the workflow operation uh, is, is being facilitated uh, by uh, expert systems. Uh, the, uh, the perception of the risk uh, the early uh, signals, the early warnings about a risky situation uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, due to uh, an interesting uh, uh, behavior in the system, for instance, that could hardly be detected by tools and uh, are very easily now detected by uh, machine learning models. Um, so, <clears throat> both for known threats and the known threats, AI has technology and techniques to provide to the SOC for enhancing uh, the task uh, of, uh, of the uh, SOC operators. Um, the event correlation also is a very good example where uh, uh, AI can provide uh, substantial support for uh, human uh, detection. So we see here an excellent example because we are in a control center. Uh, the control center is key to security operations in many domains. We have control centers uh, for uh, radar surveillance. We have control centers for drone surveillance. We have control centers for video surveillance. We have control centers for crisis management control centers for cybersecurity. There are control centers in every domain of security. And what we can do for cybersecurity can be translated in other domains. Um, talking particularly about uh, threat management and threat intel management, um, AI has a very interesting cross-domain opportunity. The last example of uh, application of AI to security uh, is in crisis management. And there we are uh, uh, facing with uh, uh, huge uh, demands from uh, the people, for instance, in, uh, in an envir environmental crisis management, you have uh, houses destroyed, cities destroyed, and not talking about war, obviously, uh, but this massive destruction lead people to ask question, and it's very difficult for uh, for the the, the 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 first responders to be efficient in uh, calming down the population. So we see here a, a potential application. There is uh, currently a trend in using AI to create bots that understand the people difficulties and are able to, uh, prom to, to, to provide the first level of information uh, to uh, people in difficulty. 
So uh, we see AI here as a vector to facilitate the, the exchanges between the citizens and the protection agencies. And that's a very interesting application. So uh, now from a more global point of view, uh, I'm uh, using here the, uh, the, the architect that uh, Nika shared with us in the previous presentation, uh, where we see that there is effectively uh, an interesting convergence between a symbolic, uh, I would say, a human knowledge and, and more uh, data-driven uh, uh, processes. And this integration uh, has to be made in order to uh, provide um, something that can be understandable, explainable, and, and this is leading to the knowledge-based services. So this was what Unica explained to us. And if you have a look at the right part of the screen, you see that in uh, notably uh, the very important uh, control center application I was uh, mentioning previously, um, we have uh, exactly this integration between information uh, which is data driven that flows from the sensors and um, machine learning and data uh, driven systems uh, that are hosted mostly in the cloud providing AI services and big data services and the operators which are kept who are kept in the middle um, between those uh, layers there is a, a data transmission and a feedback transmission. And this is where the interface between the human operator and the AI systems is very important. So maintaining and optimizing these uh, interface between the system and the human, we can create a very uh, a virtuous loop that uh, enables AI to learn from operators and operators to be assisted by AI. So uh, we keep in mind, of course, that uh, the human uh, in this uh, architecture is maintained at the core. So there's no objective to replace the human operator and it might be very dangerous. Uh, think for instance, about the surveillance of a nuclear plant, who would be uh, releasing uh, uh, a fully autonomous system for maintaining security of a nuclear plant? It would be a foolish move to do that. Human operators have to be maintained at the heart of security systems, but they have to be supported, assisted, enhanced, augmented by AI. As a conclusion to this presentation, I would like to make a specific point about identity management. As a uh, security expert, I have witnessed that most of the security flows notably in cybersecurity, but this is true also for all security domains, as we said, because uh, IT is very pervasive and is now inside the security systems. So cybersecurity is priority number one. And in cybersecurity, we see a lot the identity theft uh, being uh, used and being uh, an essential threat to the overall global security. So <clears throat> we have to, to, to pay particular attention to identity management. So this is my message here. The second message for conclusion is that uh, we must always uh, be in a preventive attitude and consider that security is not the cure to a plague that cannot be eradicated. Uh, it's the consequence of not having trained, educated, sensibilized enough. So we need to develop 
we need to develop uh, among users, uh, citizens, collectivities, uh, by education, by game, uh, by, by uh, communication. Uh, we need to develop a sense of security and global security. Um, so I would like to end up this presentation and reminding, unfortunately, as we say in cybersecurity, that, that the, the weak uh, part of the chain in, in security and cybersecurity sits very often between the chair and the keyboard, which is us. Uh, so we have to keep in mind that uh, security is not a state, it's a state of mind. Thank you very much. If I will now release the floor and if you have questions, I will be happy to answer them. Participants, if you have any questions, you can uh, raise so that uh, the professors are ready to answer. There's no security Students. issue in raising questions. Any questions? Everything was clear. Now they have to digest this. <laughs> Students? And curious students. If you have questions, please raise. Okay. So the student, the participants don't have any question. Uh, so Professor Unika, thank you so much for uh, being a keynote speaker for our conference. Uh, I thank you for sharing the details on uh, IFIP technical committees. Uh, we got insight to AI concepts and, uh, and, pers and perspectives. Hope the participants would uh, also have got uh, rich information about AI in uh, global security from you. Thank you for supporting us in every step we have taken in uh, obtaining the approval from IFIP. Thanks so much. Thank you for inviting us. And uh, if you have the further question, please send us, uh, I don't know, by email or a sure. switch, or send to your professor and your professor will send to us. <laughs> sure, I will forward the questions. And Professor uh, Dominic, you. Uh, Professor Dominic uh, Verijo, uh, thank you for gracing uh, our uh, conference with your presence and sharing your knowledge on uh, what AI for global security. You explained the importance of AI for various applications in a very interesting way. And thank you so much. You're very welcome. You. Uh, I was very happy to, to be back in India, even uh, remotely. Uh, I worked uh, intensively with India since uh, 2010. Oh, great. And I'm looking forward to, to work again with you. Sure, we are also looking forward for uh, uh, the offline conferences the next uh, in, the, in the future. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, goodbye. Bye. Students, uh, uh, feedback link is shared. Please fill the feedback link. 
please fill the feedback using the link.